I'm Nathan with Two Guys to Ride, and today we're here at the uh, Pantowners Car Show, and we're here with Brian. Brian has a fantastic 1941, uh, two and a half ton, former Army wrecker that he's modified as a mutter. So, Brian, tell us a little bit about this truck. Well, it started, like I said, it started off life as a two and a half ton wrecker for the Army. I got it as a uh, guy was going to scrap it. And I picked up the body and I said, I, I can't let this get scrapped. I had to figure out something to do with it. And uh, I've been mudding for quite a while now. So I uh, I decided to do a frame up build all brand new this time. And uh, it's a full tube, cha tube chassis truck with a big block in it. The cab just, it came just as a cab, right? There was, I mean, it wasn't anything else. The back wasn't on it. Nope, the back wasn't on it. The frame, I got the cab, the front clip and the hood was all, was all still intact. Everything was painted. Uh, so I went through and just cleaned it. Okay, so you know we talked a little bit earlier about all these uh, these uh, uh, the chrome, uh, chrome or stainless steel, uh, but all the work that you went. How long did you say it took you to polish this up and take the paint off? I got about a day and a half into polishing, just getting the paint back off. Ah, it. That's called the labor of love. <laughs> now, you'll notice that the, the lights are original, right? Yep, lights as are still well, original, as well as the turn signals, which aren't functional, but they're still original to the truck. Yep. Which, which I love, and, and we'll give you a good view of the front of it, but um, I love that original look. Thank you. Now, how did you do the frame? Uh, the frame started off as a as three by four square steel, 3 16 thick, and I just started off, squared it off, made a, a, a rectangle out of it, and that's where I started. I mean, and, okay, so, um, now, your <laughs> springs. We talked a little about, the, about these huge springs here, and I asked him about, you know, how did it go compressing the springs to put them in? But he, he, he cheated a little bit. Actually, no, he didn't. He worked really smart. So tell us how you put those springs on. So I, I made the cups to hold the top and bottom. And what I did, and before I put the limiter straps in to hold it, I actually, we picked the truck up, set the springs in, set it back down, and then put the limiter straps in to hold them in. So how do you adjust those limiter strips so that, you know, when you go muddy, you see trucks bounce out? Because... The springs are not actually held in by anything. There, there's no clamps, there's no bolts. It's just riding on weight. Yep. So how did you set that limiter strap to make sure that it won't like come apart when you're muddy? Uh, picked it up just to the point of where they started to move, set it back down so they just had a little bit of pressure to them, and then set the, set the straps in. Ah. Now, well, let's talk about the engine for a minute, because, um, and I'll show you a little close up here, but you can't see anything through the grill. I mean, you can't, it's just, it's all uh, blocked off yep. to keep water off. Yep. And mud, obviously, but more concerned, probably water. Um, what kind of an engine do you have in here? Uh, I got a big block 460 out of a 75 Ford uh, pickup. Okay. So I'm kind of getting the Ford theme. Yep. <laughs> the Ford shirt, the Ford truck, uh, and, and the back half, and we'll show you that, that the box back there is off of another Ford. What's that off of? That's off a of 1950s Ford. 1950s Ford. So this is kind of like uh, Johnny's Cadillac that he, in a song that he took out and he kept making piece by piece. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, now, did you have to? Did you modify the motor at all? Uh, the motor was taken out, refreshed up, new new uh, new head gaskets. We put a new cam in it, a little bit bigger cam this time. Uh, this motor is a test run motor. We do have another 460 motor that we're putting up for. Okay. We're trying for about 700 horse on pump gas is what we're going for. Okay. Um, that motor should be ready in the next about two years, we think. Wow. And how long did it take you to put this all together? Uh, we got about four and a half years into this build. Wow. And most of this you've done yourself. 
Yep, for the majority of it. I got a good friend of mine who owns uh, Kringles Customs out of out Siegel. He helped me do the roll cage and helped me with the hydraulic work. He really helped me out to finish it off on the little bit harder things to do for me. All right, Chris, there's your free shameless plug for your business. <laughs> so you owe him a beer. <laughs> All right. Um, now, what, what do you do with it as far as the transmission? Uh, the transmission is a C6 automatic that we had built. Uh, it, it's built for roughly about a thousand horse it can hold. It's a manual valve body now, so if we do shift it now, so that it, it, it'll hold. Okay, all right, so on this truck, you've got fully hydraulic steering. Yes. Which is something new that you haven't had on your other mudding trucks. Yep, I've never had a full hydraulic setup, so the best way to explain it is anybody who's driven a forklift knows when you're driving, it's kind of got a, a sway to it, it feels yeah. like, kind of goes back and forth. This truck does the same thing when we start getting into second and third gear. When we're going pretty fast on the road, it starts to sway and wobble a little bit. But it's supposed to be just kind of the nature of having hydraulics. I mean, that's <laughs> that, that's how it goes. How many uh, how many speeds? How many gears do you have? That's a three speed. It is a three speed. Yep. Wow. And do, and do you know approximately either how much horsepower or torque approximately you're producing? Do you have an idea? We're we're right. We should be right around 400 horse right now. Is what we're going. Wow. With. Wow. Okay. Um, now inside the cab, you had to do some modification. What what did you do in there? Yep. So I, I'm I'm a fairly tall guy. I'm six foot four. It, he so, is. <laughs> I had to, uh, we had to move the firewall forward about three to four inches to get my legs to fit in there. We cut apart the dash, I still kept it just so I have it, but I, uh, I had to take that out to move the rest of the dash forward, get the hydraulics in there, and I put a racing aluminum bucket seat in to push me farther into the back. The, the roll cage inside is maxed out as far and as tight as we could to the inside of the cab. Wow. So you have a full roll bar in here, so it, go, it comes all the way down to the front. Yep, it actually wraps up and over the motor. So if this truck is to actually go over, the motor won't be hurt, nothing will get hurt, this truck can roll and land back on its tires and we can get going again. Wow, that, that's just amazing. Now in the back, and we'll show a little video of this, but you know, you've got the bed, so from the outside it looks like just a pickup bed. Yep. But there's nothing there. Nope, the, the bed of the floor is totally empty. So to speak. <laughs> The, the bed is, is empty, the floor isn't in there. Uh, it does have the radiator. I have a uh, extra big transmission cooler in the back. Uh, the fuel cell, the battery, everything's in the back bed of the truck encased in the roll cage. Wow. Um, so, if I were to ask you what your single favorite, well, before I do that, um, why build a mudder? Uh, I mean, be, people collect cars all the time you know, do different things with them, but why for you was building something for money? I, I built it so I could take it to the car shows. People, it draws attention everywhere I get to go. I imagine <laughs> it does. Um, but I, on the weekends, I go out, play in the mud, play in the dirt, clean it up, and we can still go to the car show, have fun with it. it, it it's something different. It's kind of me. I, I've always been into big lifted trucks, so that's what I do. Well, let me tell you, this is one big lift. You can, you can see... <laughs> This thing it sits in your rearview mirror. You're gonna pull over and get let, let it go by. Um, so my, my final question, Brian, is what is your favorite thing about this truck? It, it can be it doesn't have to be the favorite, but just one of your favorite things. Is it just walking out every day and seeing it? Is it driving it? I, I I gotta say it's driving it. It really is starting it up, driving it. It it just it rattles you inside it. It's so loud, but it's one of, it's it's worth every bit of it. It is. <laughs> I bet. Well, Brian, thank you so much for showing your truck to us today. We sure appreciate it. Oh, thank you guys.